Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, let the church say amen. amen. Mother Edna would say to all of us, and the life that she has lived, she lived a faithful, devoted, and a powerful, anointed life. She would say to all of us, when you hear my home going, rejoice. Don't weep for me. I'm just cross over to be with my Lord. Just a few months ago, uh, I was out cutting my hedges and, and was just reminiscing about the goodness of the Lord and I received uh, this phone call. It was my beloved mother away from home, Mother Edna, called to say, Robert, I just had you on my mind. And I just didn't know what to do but just to call you and say how you doing. And that phone call meant a world to me. Because as being a minister, I had a lot of on my plate, but somehow she knew that I needed a word from her. And we had church. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I wish you were there to witness the moment that we shared together. And she told me, she said, son, I'm not worried. When the Lord comes, I am ready. But I'm going to work until he say, well done. Let us pray. Oh, wise eternal Father in heaven, the 
the giver of life. The giver of every good and perfect gift. And we come on this ongoing service of our dearly beloved mother. A virtuous woman. A mother to the motherless, a friend to the friendless. A comforter to those in distress. We thank you for her life. We thank you for her faithfulness. We thank you the thousands and thousands of lives that she touched all of her life, right up, up until the very last. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for the legacy that she leaves with us, a legacy of faithfulness, a, a legacy of compassion, a, a legacy of love. Patience, hard work, homemaker, a voice in the community, a faithful elder in the church of St. James, a wonderful soldier in your army. And we thank you that you stayed with her all of her life. And just the other day when you saw that she was weary and tired of the ups and downs of this life, you being an on-time God <laughs> reached down from heaven and, and, and took her soul out of the body and say, come on home, my daughter. You have fought a good fight. You have kept the faith. Yes. You have ready the race. And certainly, there is a crown yes. for your faithfulness. Yes. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. And we come, Lord, to rejoice in this home going up this faithful servant that you allow us to walk with and share in our good times and our difficult times. So Lord, unite us together around the world and let us know that, uh, that where there is unity, there is strength. We need your strength tonight. This this album. Have your way. Your way is the best way. And Lord, if we just ask you to bless your spoke servant that will come to break the bread of life to us. You have prepared him. You have equipped him. And we just invite you to have your way in him. That he may encourage our heart to run on a little further up the king's highway where we will soon meet our beloved on the other side where Job declared the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest over yonder where you live, where our risen Lord is saying to live. Lord, we want to go over there. As we come to continue to celebrate the life of Mama and Earl, and Earl, <laughs> say it with me, and Earl. <laughs> she had so many names. 
that may not be the one that she always wanted to hear first, but she responded. This time, I would say, on behalf of the family, you've been kind. You've been thoughtful. You've stood with us. So at this time, we'll ask if we move forth with the acknowledgments, followed by another selection. And then you'll hear from her daughter, Renita Best, for tribute, beautiful tribute, that she shared with the family and will share with you today. Then we'll have another selection and we'll hear then words of comfort. Let the church say amen. Amen. How sweet it is to be loved by you. On behalf of our family, we say to each of you, thank you, and we feel your love. There is a saying, if you didn't know, now you know. We knew Edna Earl Harper Dixon was loved, but now we really know. The genuine outpour of love and support has been overwhelming and abundant. For that alone, we say thank you. Thank you for every act of kindness that you have shown. Over this past week, we have felt your love, received your prayers, and we are most grateful for each of you. Through your many acts of kindness, our hearts are touched by words of sympathy, love, comfort, support expressed in each card, text, email, social media post, and floral note. The acknowledgement. <clears throat> Honoring the life of Edna, of Elder Edna Earl Harper Dixon. Whereas the pastoral leadership, session, and members of St. James Presbyterian Church, located in Snow Hill, North Carolina, mourn the death of our oldest member, a great friend, leader, and saint, Elder Edna Earl Harper Dixon. And whereas she blessed us with her presence, which was instrumental in attributing to a more wholesome worship experience and inspire those in our congregation to turn toward God for their eternal salvation. And whereas Edna Earl Harper Dixon served the St. James Church family as a ruling elder, and whereas we have prayed for Elder Edna Earl Harper Dixon and her family, and will continue praying for her family, especially during this time of grief. Now, therefore, be it resolved, that the St. James Presbyterian Church family will forever love Elder Edna Earl Harper Dixon, express our sincere appreciation for her devoted service, which was critical to the life of the Church of Christ, honor our dear beloved, acknowledge that her spirit will always be with us, and we extend our deepest condolence. Signed this 19th day of July 2023 in the year of our Lord, Moderator Reverend Robert Johnson, Lay Minister Elder Donald Davis. Resolution honoring Edna Earl Harper Dixon. Whereas Edna Earl Harper Dixon was born on January 19, 1934 in Snow Hill, North Carolina and passed on July 15, 2023 at 89 years old, whereas Edna Earl Harper Dixon resided at 110 Pine Show Drive in Snow Hill, North Carolina, and before her death, she was the oldest living African-American resident who was born and raised in Snow Hill, North Carolina, whereas Edna Earl Harper Dixon graduated from the Greene County Training School in 1955 and attended Lenore Community College. Whereas Edna Earl Harper Dixon raised her family in Snow Hill and was a beloved mother, grandmother, and great grandmother, and impacted the lives of many children as a child care provider and community mom, and served as a confidant and mentor to many in the Snow Hill community. 
Whereas, Edna Earl Harper Dixon was employed at Green County Head Start as a teacher assistant in Green County Schools and a daycare center director. She also worked in Wayne County Schools and retired as a North Carolina state employee from Caswell Developmental Center. Whereas, Edna Earl Harper Dixon actively engaged civically in the Snow Hill community as a member of the Green County branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, as a Crown Mother of the Year on multiple occasions, the Green County Training School, South Green High School National Alumni Association Incorporated, the State Employee Association of North Carolina, a strong advocate for voting rights, providing residents with voter assistance, assistance and served in key roles in her grandson's United States Congressman Don Davis, various elections, and whereas Edna Earl Harper Dixon was a ruling elder and the oldest member of St. James Presbyterian Church in Snow Hill, where she actively worshiped and served until her death. Now, therefore be it resolved that the town of Snow Hill recognizes and honors Snow Hill resident Edna Earl Harper Dixon for her longtime engagement and dedication to making significant contributions to our community. Be it further resolved that the town of Snow Hill is grateful for her love and dedication to making life better for our residents and be it further resolved that we express our heartfelt condolences to the family, signed Mayor Dennis Lyles. Dear family, friends, and the Snow Hill community. It broke my heart into pieces, watching my grandmother, Edna Earl Harper Dixon, who I call Mama, take her last breath. I am forever grateful for her raising me and constantly breathing life into me by influencing and encouraging me every step. We shared many cherished memories talking and laughing, as I am sure she did with all of us. She was an incredible woman who loved us deeply and dearly. As a constituent, she always advocated for you to me. Sharing her wisdom has allowed me to fight more intently for us. Please know she wanted the best for her family, friends, and community. We are better off because of her and will be even stronger, resulting from the lessons she shared that remain within us. While challenging, it is only fitting and appropriate to share my heartfelt condolences with those surviving such a notable constituent, even when it's your grandmother. On behalf of the first congressional district of North Carolina, I am praying for you and our community, prayerfully, Donald Davis, Member of Congress. We would like to acknowledge the following. U.S. House of Representatives, Whip Catherine Clark, former U.S. Congressman and friend, G.K. Butterfield, the Congressional Black Caucus, the town of Snow Hill and Hooverton, the Harper Family Reunion, Green County High School, South Green High School Alumni Association, Green County Branch of the NAACP, Green County Senior Center, Kinston Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, National Council of Negro Women, Metropolitan Greensboro Area Section, United Parcel Service in Kinston, Bennett College, National Alumni Association, Greensboro Chapter, Holidays Bridge Club in Greensboro, Black Book Club in Greensboro, Reverend Fanta Lansden and St. James Presbyterian Church, Greensboro, former pastor Isaiah and D. Fennessy, and members of St. Luke Presbyterian Church in Dallas, Texas. Trinity Lake Homeowners Association in Greensboro, Green Central High School Class of 1970 and 1971, Simply Hair, Laverne Williams Stiles, Universal Printings, local churches and pastors, we thank you so much. Again, how sweet it is to be loved by each of you that's here today. Edna Earl would be so happy. With all of our love, thank you, and we pray God's blessings to each of you.
that's here today, and all who've been praying for us. Thank you. To her neighbors, 
that Coco, she loved the UNC, by the way. That was a beautiful UNC floral arrangement. And I told Laverne and them the other day, they're up there cooking something, talking about everything. <laughs> I believe Miss Nell, Miss Nell was doing more than cooking. Mom was doing more than eating on that. <laughs> but to this community, and especially her children, from the daycare and beyond. She loved her neighbors, she loved Pineville Drive, she loved watching out her window, watching everybody going up and down the street. She loved the Harold family, George, Mary Holden. She loved them, and it pained her heart, especially when Jackie departed this earth. She loved those conversations each day, down, and so many of her friends, she just checked in with every day. But I must admit, if there was anything that she loved above her family, anything she loved above the community, it was eating. <laughs> if you had something, she would say, what's on your plate? She came by on Thanksgiving and I said, Mama, what is it that you want? She said, give me a little bit of everything. <laughs> and we always said that if something happened to that appetite, we know something's going on. So many rich memories. The trip to the red station wagon, biscuits and molasses. She kept food in the refrigerator. Those favorite snacks, James, and marshmallows in the pantry. She would faithfully watch the young and restless. She thought she was Miss Chancellor. <laughs> she always believed she was old school and keeping a flashlight in a toolbox and a full tank of gas. She enjoyed playing solitaire, bid whips, and spades, and even though the family didn't want to play with her, I would play with her. They didn't want to play with her because she would always underbid. <laughs> See, I figured it out. I just always bid it two or three books over. <laughs> and she teared playing for Keno down here. Especially when she won. But then those moments that she always asked to borrow and jump to the stadium again. <laughs> she knew everybody and always enjoyed talking with us and laughing with us. She drew strength from her mother Aileen and her independence from her mom. To think about this, to get a house in the 70s and to raise her own kids. She believed in education and pushed all her children. She said, baby, you get up here, you can't get rid of it. She was a community mom, where so many came over and hung out at the house, wearing a signature, the mold for the longest gold tooth, and that amazing hair, beautiful, beautiful hair. As I reflect on her life, and especially the last few years, and I ask myself, what's the one word that she used the most? One word that she used the most. And it came quickly, without hesitation, that word was love. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, love. love. Mama, we love you. And I came by the house and I said, baby, I love you. And she said, I love you too. It's okay for us to engage. We love you. We love you. We love you. She loved her and didn't meet a stranger. So many find it difficult to love. We sometimes are chasing love and we find, are trying to find love often in the wrong places. Love is a fascinating word and concept.
myself. You hear so many songs about love. Oh, there's a sin line between love and hate. If love and you is wrong, and I'm going to bring this down for the young folks. Uh, my kids listen to a song uh, that talks about fake love. I've got fake people showing fake love. Straight up. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. So I'm not the only one that listens to drink. Love can be complex and challenging for us. A simple word, a challenge. Yet mom made it appear so easy. Think about the range of personalities. And that's just in the family. And she still had to figure out how to love all of us. Mama understood the word of that one, one song too that said, real love, I'm looking for real love. The Bible teaches us, my friends, about love, something that can be challenging. Love is mentioned 714 times in the Bible. Here's just a few lessons about love that Mama taught us all. In the Gospel of Matthew, it reads, Though thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is, like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It's without a doubt we're here today because she understood what loving heart was all about. She was all in with a heart, all in with a soul, all in with a mind. And then after that, she turned and shared love with her neighbors. She was all in. And then I turned to John. And it reads, greater love hath no man, woman, than this, to lay down his or her life for her friend. She went to back for all of us, and she loved us so much that she was willing to give her all. She was all in. And then yet, Corinthians. The three most important things to have is faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them is love. It's made clear a concept that can be complex. But yet it's made clear it's the greatest thing that's called upon us to do. Perhaps it's the one thing that we can struggle with. Sometimes we don't always treat even those closest to us right. Amen. But we're to love. And uh, Earl Harper Dixon taught us about love. She loved the Lord. She loved her family. She loved this community. She lived love. She showed love. She shared love. She modeled love. She encouraged us in love. She checked in on us out of love. She understood the greatest commandment, which is love. Love doesn't mean we have to be right. That's why I think we get it confused. But love means we have to have enough care and concern that we try to reconcile. Dina, Diana, thank you. Mama loved you, and I know you loved her back. Diana, Dina, 
Thanks for checking the mail. And what I mean by that is being there at her side. Amen. Amen. Renita and Greg. Mama loved you. And I know you loved her back. Renita, it's time, as you know, Mama, for us to not look back, but to look forward. We loved you. Mama loved you and great. All of the scripture lessons, even at times you may not have thought she was listening, I believe she heard you more than you realize. Your mama loved you. And I know you love her back. And Junior, oh Junior, you hold on to those words. And y'all went to sleep together watching the young and restless. <laughs> you hold on to those words. Mama loved. Our heartache can also fix our vision. Our heartache can reset our purpose. On July the 14th, Diane and Dina were there at her side. We thought it was another day of the month. The unimaginable began to happen. She began to transition. From this earth. She became unresponsive. And the family was called in. I was just getting in from DC and went straight to the hospital. And we were sitting in the family waiting room and we heard the intercom go off and we heard Code Blue 366 Code Blue 3. And we saw and heard the medical team running down the hall. And I looked and said, Mama, it's 374. So we were still hoping. But we began to hear some tears of another family. And I was thinking about this. If mama was there and had her strength, she would probably said, open the door and let me talk to her. Because I know what she said to me and I know what I believe she would have said to them because she did not need a strength. She would say, there is a man above. No matter what you think, Today, my friends, in our coming today, I believe she realized something greater, and that something greater was there would be a call. Our number would be called. We were sitting there, it was 366. It's okay when it's somebody else. But it was just minutes later. Mm -hmm. Came code blue 37. Mm -hmm. My friends, as we come together today, I would ask of you to hold on to this lesson that she taught us, and that is to love. To love. To love. Because. Our number will Man. be called. Yes, sir. And I'm reminded of the word that God so loved the world. He did what he loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son for us. So that we. We'd be able to experience life. Yes, 
so that we would be able to have mom, granny, and auntie. I thank God for her. Let us leave today with an unyielding commitment to love a little more. To love a little more. And I end today. If you will please join me. We love you, Mom.
those things. The new Christian fellowship family pastor. Open the doors for homeboy celebration. To every program participant. Recognize all ministers in the pulpit and also the congregation. And to the congressman slash elder and cook. Thank you for the words of encouragement. God gave you the strength that you need. To the ladies, to the former, to the German servants, Palmer, who we'll also thank you. To this vast number of friends and family, the family would like to thank you for sharing in this home born celebration. Actually, please, ma'am, please, sir, remember this family in the upcoming weeks and days in your prayers. They need your visits and prayers more on next week than today. Please remember this final family. Mrs. Dixon, more remains for rest in the Slovio Cemetery. Those traveling in the session, please, ma'am, please, sir, we'll be having airlines in the emergency places in the state's coast to be here for And to this fine family, staff and management has come over here, and I'd like to personally thank you for allowing our firm to do this service. For our service has been satisfactory every step. And at this time, as we have some great softies, we will prepare for the final view. God bless you.
What's going on, man? Good. How you doing? All right. Can I get some of these pictures here?